Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Striker starting as the Blue Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we have Jane starting as the very fashionable Pink Protoss. This is on Vermeer. And game one really just showing off what I was talking about, where Jayun just knows, he just is in Zuri's head. And just is able to find those little timings to sneak the Zealots in, create a huge amount of disruption. Striker very, very flustered. I think the other issue is, is I believe that Jayun is... Between Jayun and between Striker, as far as being able to just pick apart a player... Like, you play... Jayun will ask for heads-up matches against players. Like, okay, hey, you want to play? Come on, come on, come on, let's play. And part of the reason he does that is because he'll get beat sometimes when people are in really good shape, but he'll lose two or three games convincingly, and then he'll go and he'll study, and he'll come back and he'll win that third, fourth, fifth, sixth match. Just very intelligent. Pylon being dropped, the natural expansion. I believe this is going to be Forge first opener as the probe making its way out very, very early. Is this going to be a cross-map scout? Is he going to go for a 12 Nexus? That would be shocking. Looks like Striker is opting for an Overlord first build. I don't see a drone pulling off the line, so I think this is going to be a 12 hatch. Or is this going to be some sort of proxy play where he's just sneaking a single probe out and hoping that it just doesn't get spotted and going for... Nope, he's just going to go for a cross-map scout to try to confirm the initial build order. And upon seeing this, this has to get... Seeing this early a scout has to make Striker nervous. So dropping the 12 hatch. Looked like for a second there he's thinking about dropping the pool before even that hatch route as far as a turnaround. But yeah, Jayun I think just wanting to scout out, confirm the 12 hatch so he can go ahead and go into a 12 nexus. Is holding short, but now dropping that 12 nexus. Talk about what a play and also extremely lucky. Attacking the probes from behind the mineral line, actually getting really good damage, forcing Striker to draw troops back. But that's, uh, so I'm wondering what triggered that because that's, it's going to pay off for him. What a great play. And Jayun also getting the probe to be annoying in the base. And it's going to be a long time before Zerglings are out here. So it looks like a single drone dedicated to maybe deal with this. And Jayun has the APM to sneak away with this. And look at this, not even bothering to follow it up with the forge. So, okay, going gateway, then forge. To plop it down, but for a second there, you're like usually you'll see players when they follow it up, they'll go forge just to be careful. But right now, Jayun kind of showboating is like I've, I'm enough, I'm safe enough in this base where I can pull this off. <clears throat> still staying annoying around that corner. And here's the other trick of this: is Striker still doesn't have scout. Looks like Striker is going to try to. Okay, he's like, okay, well you're contained. Well you don't have a lot of that scouting information. I'm going to drop a little bit of the later gas and grab that hatchery. <clears throat> So it could be like, oh, hey, I'm just flustered and grabbing that gas later. Or it's also possible uh, that Jayun will be wise to this and realize that it's a quick third hatchery uh, to, and that will help adjust to this. And, but look at this, the Cybernetics Core already dropping as well before that first cannon. So Jayun really playing on a sharp edge here and pushing that tech rapidly forward. And Striker, yeah, we'll see how, how he does as far as a follow-up. But right now, he's Jayun is off to the races. Because he dropped all this tech, hasn't even built... Has he built a Zealot? Is this what's midfield? No, that's a probe midfield. Has yet to build a Zealot. Has one cannon between here. That's all of his defenses. And otherwise, has just built probes, dropped a bunch of tech. He's... Uh, let's see if momentarily he's going to drop that Stargate at his main. <clears throat> but in the meantime, third just coming online for Striker. Is making his way to lair and really, yeah, Jayun's seeing absolutely everything. First Zergling going to make his way this direction. Is going to see zero Zealots. And that Stargate's already halfway finished as the lair's hitting halfway. And so Jayun, once again, going to have a big advantage as far as the air control battle goes. And I do believe that is one style that I, I'm wondering if he's doing that particularly to play against Striker in that style, is to uh, take away air control because he knows that Striker likes playing more of the 5-hatch, 6-hatch Muta opener. And so by stripping away, getting the earlier, yeah, going plus one weapon, so by getting the earlier Mutalisk and pulling that advantage away, going to go for advantageous mind games in that regard. Let's see if Striker follows that up with... Because right now, yeah, Jayun, he's got 
two zealots if there was like a ling flood at this stage although it is at cross position and jane does have an, a live probe so probably would be able to plop cans to deal with it anyway <clears throat> layer finished hatchery hydalus then being dropped as far as a follow-up i think in recognition that he's going to need the anti-air especially this might be a response to game one but this is the correct play here <clears throat> as that Corsair is already making its way out. There's an Overlord to the north. That's the one to try to check tech and sacrifice its life. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get eyes on anything except saturation of the natural expansion. And the first Corsair is going to be able to dive to that natural. It will be able to see the Hydralis then, but still is easily going to be able to kill this Overlord. So how many Overlords are exposed? There's three, four potential Overlords exposed. And the first Hydralis is being produced. And keep in mind, you need like a, a good amount of Hydralis to stop these Corsairs. You need at least four Hydralisks, three or four Hydralisks underneath to keep those Corsairs off your Overlord line. You can see that it just doesn't care. It's like, yeah, one Hydralisk, I don't care. Just going to keep doing a little bit of damage here, soften it up so that as far as a turnaround, when that Corsair count grows, still going to have soft targets. Yeah, immediately moving to the north, it's going to get another kill right there. Striker's still doing a pretty good job of droning up behind this. Single Hydralisk able to engage there, but the Corsair is just moving now against the Sim City, plus one weapons being upgraded for those Hydralis, but Striker in the red. The Zealots not missing a beat, marching out, clearing, doing some damage, clearing out the Zerglings. Additional gateways being plopped down. It looks like we got a Templar Archive as well. Some Zerglings able to sneak through the lines, though. And Jane was thinking about sneaking a DT here. Recognizing that he has air control, potentially can take out a lot of troops. The Zerglings... Sneaking through, Jane just going to rely... He's like, okay, I can take care of this with just the probes. And actually, yeah, easily able to do so, mitigating a little bit of loss. So he loses one probe. But the Corsair going to hang out, and four Zealots marching up. And now, yeah, these two Overlords certainly going to lose their lives. I do believe that's going to be the target location. There's enough Hydralisks and a good, uh, decent enough SimCity at the natural expansion that I don't think that's much of a threat. Did the Corsair die? I think one, of, uh, one Corsair was wiped out. But there's still an opportunity... Well, okay, opportunity looks like it's is now gone. With the, the you already got four hydralists up there, so the Zelts are just gonna have to wait outside. So Jayun might still go for it with that Dark Templar moving forward. I'm not yeah, Overlord speed not being upgraded. So the Overlord's being kind of forced out of location. The Zealots engaging on the gap right there. Slew of Hydralists engaging otherwise, and yeah, not enough to, to push through this time. So Jayun gonna be shoved back. However, he does have a gateway flood behind this. High Templar being built, plus one weapons being upgraded as well. Should have that observatory in not too long and a good amount of side storm. So the High Templar already uh, making their way to the natural expansion to build some energy up. Some good side storm to follow. Striker doing a great job actually behind all that pressure to just move to five hatch, uh, well, what will soon be six hatch Hydralisk. And macro really, really well, actually. So sitting at 45 drones, which is not, nothing to sneeze at, is grabbing that 9 o'clock. So despite all of the early game shenanigans, in a pretty good spot here. More uh, The Dark Templar continuing to cycle out, wants to take a shot at that 9 o'clock. There isn't an Overlord in position. And Overlord speed is not there either. And that Corsair, a sufficient enough threat between point A and point B, if Jayun does manage to sneak his way around, could shoot the gap, get a lot of Hydralis kills there. Striker doing a pretty good job of filtering out other locations where potentially Dark Templar might be able to sneak across. The Corsair, you can see, lurking back there. And that Overlord getting there just in the nick of time. Oh, it looks like the Dark Templar split off and went to the 12 o'clock location. <clears throat> Striker not able to deal with at least that Corsair. That Corsair is going to be able to wander out. That Zealot's diving in. Plus one weapons there on the Hydralists and more crashing down. And now things falling apart a little bit for Jayun. Because with plus one weapons, yeah, these Zealots aren't going to be sufficient to, yeah, just getting, even with the leg speed, they've got plus one weapons as well, but bunched up enough Hydralists, enough of a SimCity as well. Three Zealots able, four Zealots able to go ahead and sneak their way across towards the main, however. Lurker's not yet hatched and burrowed. Might be able to get some economic disruption, but Striker with... Overlord speed coming online is going to ignore the attack at his main, just send out sufficient hydros to deal with that, and start pressing towards that natural expansion. 
to maybe get some sort of lurker contain going. This does tend to be a weak point in Striker's uh, arena of play, is getting those Hydralisks out in proper location. It looks like two High Templar and a DT in this shuttle to the north, however. Looking to drop. Still, this is a plump. This is a ripe drop location for either. So the Dark Templar are being dropped short. And High Templar are going to be dropped on the high ground to go ahead and storm over that ledge. So before where I said Striker did a good job macroing, all of that is now going down the drain. Because that DT already has four kills. And the er, and that third base, sorry, was obliterated plus every drone. Wow, this is turning into a massacre. Hydralis finally able to take out that shuttle, but not before it was able to levy, what, 30 drone kills? Sheesh. 20 drone kills? That was a lot of drone kills and counting. That Dark Templar is still in the base. Jayun moving out with a happy probe. Single Zergling gonna, well, maybe get that probe kill and slow things down. I don't think it matters, though, considering it's gonna be, what, two, three complete drone cycles for Striker to get his drone line back and needs to resaturate. Does have a lot of hatcheries and larvae to work with to do so. Jayun moving out, and this is what I was talking about. Yeah, Striker leaving a couple lurkers unburrowed midfield, so they're going to eat a lot of free damage. Three o'clock base going to come online. Absolutely no problem. Single Zergling blockading what could have been a potential fourth. Jane with a huge supply lead right this second. And honestly could grab this fourth, but that with the map control he has, plus one weapons, plus one armor, is really controlling the match thus far. But Striker starting to get the Hydralisks out does have plus one weapons. Did he make his way? So plus two weapons just about to finish. And let's see. Did he go for it? No, he's going for Hive. I was wondering if he upgraded drop. I don't think so. Still, Jayun has enough of a strike force. The one thing is the Psy Storm might be a little bit less because keep in mind, two of those High Templar were in that drop. So still has sufficient Psy Storm to be frustrating, but maybe not enough to turn tides. But I don't know that it matters with a 30 supply lead. Lurkers burrowing to the north. Could be Psystorm fodder. And you can see Striker, yeah, kind of scrambling to get that in position. Yeah, big Psystorms drop. Observer going to be able to clear all of that out. And James slowly pressing in and getting, yeah, Lurkers under storm before he's even able to move into that 12 o'clock location. A little bit of distance mining here happening in the background, but I don't know that it is all that punishing. So Jane with a 40 supply lead now going to be able to clear out, I don't think there's any stopping it, clearing out the hatcheries to the north. And then there's more, this is a huge size storm gap. If the High Templar can get in position to go ahead and drop storm there, some Zerglings being fielded to try to push in. One hatchery already down. More size storm on the way, and the High Templar, does he have, do they have more in it? Looks like not. Drawing to the front, the observers are still in position. There's plenty of Dragoons to go ahead and deal with this. So, and more reinforcements making the way across. So Striker building more troops to try to push this back. The Lurkers trying to box those Dragoons in. Might be able to, at least they've boxed one Dragoon in. And is able to fight that back and take somewhat minimal losses, honestly. Looking for the Zealot. Around the Zealots, to, there they are. Uh, to run up and rejoin. And it might be able to re-engage that attack. This is where the plus two weapons... Picking off those High Templar and engaging heads up versus the Dragoons has been really valuable. But now with just a few troops, Striker being pushed right back. 40 supply lead for Jayun. Jayun going to go ahead and grab his force. So rather than grabbing it to the bottom right, he's going to go ahead and grab it to the north. There's that High Templar. I was looking for that second High Templar. Still has energy, but is kind of playing guerrilla style in the gap, I guess. Maybe he wants to try to walk his way up and do another storm on the uh, mineral line. Whip adding an, or whip. Striker adding a, another macro hatch at the 9 o'clock location. And rebuilding that hatchery to the north. Creep colony preventatively. To turn into a sunken colony, which might be well worth it. Hive is up. But no hive tech out on the field as of yet. James still with a 30 supply lead. The Zerg, well, the Overlord going to be able to sweep down. Spot that base coming online. I think James playing a little bit more passively because he does have that fourth base up and running his main should be gone momentarily. Lone Dragoons here and there. Wonder if Jayun was hunting for that High Templar as well, because honestly, I feel like that High Templar could have turned that fight. 
So Zealots, Dragoons, etc. storming to the upper right. It looks like a stream of Zerglings making the way that direction. One thing, once you hit Hive Tech, there are ways to turn it back around. Zerglings getting on top of the High Templar, able to wipe it out. One of them is Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings. Plus one Carapace has already been upgraded. But that's plus two weapons, plus two armor. June uh, with the supply, well, with the upgrade advantage, with the supply advantage. Striker has Hive, but hasn't turned that into a Defiler Mound to drop Plague or drop Swarm or any of that late game stuff. It looks like he's going to go ahead and try to grab a Hatchery bottom left before establishing that, desperately trying to get more troops. A Nidus Canal is being constructed. Probes transferring upper right, so Jayun's economy going to be continue to be solid. He's got, has opened it up to a 60 supply lead at this stage. Single Zealot finding that bottom left hand base, so it will be able to wipe that out. And Striker, I think, so Defiler Mound looks like it was built at the 9 o'clock. <clears throat> Maybe if he gets some Lurkers up, some Adrenal Upgrade, can land some amazing plagues. And if these High Templar keep get stranded, he can find his way back. But right now, it's looking... Like, it's well on the way to another Jayun victory. Jayun grabbing that Nexus top right. When you're ahead, get more ahead. Bunch of gateways behind. This does have some probes just hanging out at the main. Need to be uh, given their assignment duty some location. Oh, big size storm. Flight and troops held back there. So, striker holds the left-hand side of the map. Well, let's see if he can sneak a Nidus bottom left. I don't think so, though. Zorglin's trying to sweep through and pick off High Templar where they can. But Jane doing a good job of having Zealots nearby to go ahead and engage that. It looks like he's splitting his army two directions. Some Hydralisks and a Lurker blockading that ramp. I don't know that's going to be sufficient to... to stop everything. Some Zealots on patrol waiting for that Lurker egg to hatch so he can go ahead and storm in. Otherwise, let's see if some plagues land. No, just a Defiler wandering a little bit too far out there. And getting wiped out. There are Defilers here, but right now, yeah, I, I'm assuming Consume's not upgraded. Another drop that I missed at the 9 o'clock, wiping out everything there. There's Plague being upgraded. So Striker, while he's distracted with attacks at his front, losing more drones. Is he going to respond? Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to respond in time to that, but that was bait because Psystorm wasn't ready. So just emptying that for 2 High Templar for free, going to morph into an Archon instead. Single Hydralist attacking that northern location. It looks like all the Zealots died to the Lurker to the north. Jayun going to go ahead and expand again <clears throat> to the nearby, what do you want to call this, 5 o'clock base. However, the base was taken out bottom left. Striker at 57 drones across some scattered bases. It has held, has denied the upper right. But Jayun still with a big supply lead, has plus three weapons, plus two armor, more drops. He's waiting for that. At the main, it looks like they're going to pay for it with their lives. But clearing that base at the very least. So, and this Hydralis might do it. I didn't think this was going to get saved. Or I, I didn't think this was going to get taken down. But it does look like that Hydralisk might be able to wipe that Nexus out. So, at least small victories here. James still with the much stronger economy. But one Dark Swarm right here, that could change the name of the game if that Defiler survives, which I don't think it's going to. Yeah, Lurker's getting wiped out right there. Finally, Jane, well, I want to say finally retaking this, but not quite. A stream of shuttles, so now he's just showboating. He knows he's won the game at this stage, so now he's playing goofy and styling on Striker is what's happening. He's like, Striker, why aren't you leaving this game effectively? That's what this is at this stage. This is this is uh, chumminess between friends. So a near full control group of zealots being dropped on the hive and spawning pool at the main. That will be it for that. Those shuttles should get wiped out. June going to be able to retake that upper right. <laughs> Spawning pool gone, hive gone. So striker going to need to rebuild elsewise. It looks like he did have some critical upgrades running. So plus three carapace and plus, uh, I believe, plus three weapons on the hydralisks. Trying to regrab bottom left. And he still has the defiler mound out there. So the hive isn't so huge a loss. 
Gonna be able to clean things up otherwise. Because, yeah, the upgrades are on the way. That's not that's not cancelled. He still has the Defiler Mound. He's not gonna be at Ultra's Cavern capacity for quite some time. Jayun expanding the bottom right, by the way. Behind all this, Striker gathering up some attack forces, looking for a location to maybe do some damage. But Jayun's army... Well, let's see if it draws back. Looks like it's just regrouping with the observers to go ahead and careen into... Well, they're not a lot mining there, but should be able to take out the hatcheries. And Stryker, with his most of his attack forces here at the 3 o'clock, is going to have to send reinforcements piecemeal. Again, across this gap. If the Archons reposition to the south with the Dragoons, yeah, that could be uh, tough to breach. <clears throat> because that is a wall of flame between here and there. With potential side storms in between, although not, not not any energy left. The Zealots able to clear all of the drones, take out two hatcheries. Really, the critical bit here is going to be these evolution chambers and their ability to finish those upgrades. So that could be the big win if Striker is able to hold. Next is going up in the top right-hand corner, by the way. A Zealot from nowhere. Was that a leftover Zealot from the previous attack? I assume that's a leftover Zealot from the previous attack. Able to sweep in. The Hydra still need to defend, again, these two evolution chambers. Plus three weapons is going to finish, so that's one less that he needs to defend. The Zealot, okay, getting wiped out, and it's going to still morph to layer, and he's going to rebuild his Hive on location right there, rather than risk it. Striker able to uh, at least get that bottom left base up. Starting to get it running. Some cannons morphing in for Jayun. Top right. And that will allow him to secure essentially two bases. Hydra is pouring in to defend, but a big army in between. And Jayun, well, is he going to engage it? Looks like he's going to go ahead and sack the bases in upper right. And potentially pivot for maybe a game-ending assault at the 9 o'clock or maybe in the bottom left. Although he does have to go uphill versus Lurkers, so we'll see. So going to end up losing a lot of Nexus and some cannons. He is mining here at the bottom right. He can go ahead and move in with what's left. There are some Lurkers and Zerglings, and unfortunately they're going to go through the Nidus Canal and move midfield. Right as James' attack force is arriving. And I, are there observers with this? There's no... Okay, there's the observer. The observer trailing by quite a bit. So Jayun with that repivot is actually going to end up losing two bases. So maybe Jayun with a little bit of showboating. <laughs> Jayun tried to sneak some cannons down here. Might end up flubbing this into a game, uh, an additional match. We'll see. Hydra is up on the high ground. There are a lot of Reavers, however, at the inside three. So Defiler Mount's still up. Evolution Chamber is finished. So... Level 3 Carapace, level 2 Claws aren't bad. The Hive's just here to go ahead. Yeah, he doesn't need Hive at this stage. He's got all the tech as long as he preserves that Evolution Chamber. Jayun still has a big army count lead, but he's only mining at two bases until he gets the 6 o'clock up and running. So Striker, now that he's remining at his main, theoretically has an economic advantage. She's just down 70, 60, 70 supply. And needs to get some plagues off on uh, this army and just have just a lot more out there to stop it. So there's some plague. Does hit a good amount of the zealots. So Jayun, if he has two massive misengagements here and loses the entirety of his army twice, I will say Striker has a good shot at getting back into this. Jayun's still way ahead. <clears throat> but... There's breathing room. A lurker up on the high ground, getting six kills and denying some mining here at the three uh, at the inside three. And actually, there's more mining, but this is almost gone. So now a reaver and shuttles joining the fray, pushing cross map striker. Yeah, okay, this might be the killing blow. Just didn't have enough. Yeah, he doesn't have enough to fight this back. Waiting for it. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Shuttle pushing forward. It's really the shuttles and the reavers, I think, that are capping it. That uh, Nidus Canal is not long for life. The Nidus Canals cannot be rebuilt because the hive is gone. So that is going to leave. And the Hydralist Den going down. And there isn't a double Hydralist Den this time. So with that, that should be GG. Although, yeah, I was looking for Striker to maybe motion something back. It looks like not, though. Yeah, and I think Striker gonna call, uh, is going to allow the GD to... <laughs> 
<laughs> happen here. That is a lot of Archons. This is usually something you see on a BGH game, is like this level of Archonage. Archonage. That's a new word I can throw out there now. Archonage. wonder if that's been done in a commentary before. But uh, this is GG. It's the question of like, okay, how long is it going to take Striker to call it? Because Jayun at double the supply. Drones fleeing for their lives, scattering every which way. I guess the main's still mining. The Archon's now positioning to the north. Yeah, just pure Archon. Pure Archon I Templar here. Although the Archon's having trouble, like, it, th they do not care about Dark Swarm at all. Dark Swarm matters nothing to Archons. They still get, I think, all their base damage, too. Uh, because I think it's all splash. Striker actually starting to mine top right. <laughs> so denying that base over the wall and trying to mine top right. Refusing to relent. Evolution Chamber is going to be gone. Zelt checking that three. And now it's going to be, yeah, whack-a-mole game. More Archons moving their way out. 183 supply for Jayun. This is just Striker being defiant is what it comes down to. This game's over. Spire is going to be gone. Hydrosten's gone. Hive will be down again as soon as troops make their way up that direction. Is there a shuttle dropping? Yeah, shuttle and some reavers dropping here bottom left. That spore colony is not going to be sufficient to provide the defense. Some lurkers moving up. Maybe with a lack of observers that'll make something happen. But the thing is, is they got to burrow and unburrow, and that shuttle can just lift them right back up. It looks like the Archon's going to go ahead and pull right out. I'm going to leave that hive alone. I'm wondering if he even realizes that this is left here. Actually, that's kind of him to leave the spire as well. Um, but yeah, Lurker's taking some shots here, bottom left. <clears throat> the Archon's now making their way to the upper right. They're just linebacker force. Archon, like, if there was, like, a cross mesh of, like, football and StarCraft, I really do feel like the Archons would be the linebackers, you know? Just, like, these big, beefy guys that are just hunkering down the field. Like, little zealot running back, huge Archon, just diving at whatever they can. Oh, anyway, <clears throat> Striker actually doing pretty job, uh, pretty pretty job, uh, pretty good job keeping a bank, all things considered. Still down, two hundred supply to one hundred seven. June now starting to press up, and yeah, that is a lot of troops. It's kind of like the, it's the miracle army you're looking for late game. Very good job not side storming his own observers. That's something that a lot, a lot of players miss. Cleaning up, and I think Jane, I'm wondering if he realizes there's a base up there. Their striker finally dropping the GG. Maybe you're going to try to tire him out because I believe this is best of five and first to three wins. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.